I'm Jonathan Mason. And I am Sonia Madison, and welcome to Law Unfiltered, where we talk about some of the current and practical events and the legal implications. And we've talked about Prince before, and he continuously stays in the news because even after his death, he's still bringing up legal issues. And the latest one is with Jay-Z and Title. I know you know about it. Can you kind of go through some of the allegations and why, once again, Prince is, is creating another legal implication? Yeah. Um... Prince is the, I guess the um, executive is the state, the Bremen Trust, I think it is, but whatever okay. trust company that's been appointed to manage his business affairs. They've authorized his record label, NPG Music, and his publishing company, NPG Music Publishing, to file suit against Rock Nation, um, who they allege is the owner of Tidal, the streaming service. Right. And um, so basically they're saying that Title has been streaming Prince's music without license or permission from Prince or from the estate. And so they wanted to stop. The streaming hadn't stopped. And so they filed a lawsuit. Now, it's not just that they've been doing it willy-nilly. Um, title alleges that they have the right to do it um, and that their various agreements that were reached to allow them to do it. And the estate counters that by saying, yes, Prince gave you the right to stream his next studio album, which was a hit and run album. And that, and you had the exclusive right to do that for a period of 90 days, but you had no broad general right to distribute or stream Prince's music. And so, they constantly ask, at least according to their complaint, they've constantly asked Rock Nation the title to produce these various agreements that they have referred to. And so far, they haven't been forthcoming. So here we are, and that's why they brought this lawsuit. So, I mean, again, to be clear, like, Prince, of course, was the epitome of let me protect my music. And, and I guess, you know, even after death, there is still some protection as to whether or not someone can have the use of their music or, you know, you know. You know oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, you know, when you own copyright in music or any form of creative work, then that copyright lasts after your death. Right. You've got another 70 years or your estate has another 70 years to exploit the copyright in your works. And so... Sometimes, they, actually, when someone dies, it creates you know more issues because then other people have to decide on how his music will be used, licensed. Because you know, Prince, you've never seen, well, at least not while he was alive, you've never seen Prince's music in an ad. Um, at least to my recollection. No, no it, it, it wouldn't have been. <laughs> he, he was not. A lot of artists are protective like that. They don't want... I mean, I can assure you that, um, you know, Chevrolet, GM General Motors would have loved to have Little Red Corvette, oh, sure. even though the song wasn't really about a car. I end up hearing but, a lot of music in movies, I, you know, just when they're doing that soundtrack, right, right. at the beginning, as I remember for the Grey's movie, it was a big, um, earn it, and I forget the guy's names, but yeah, it was all over that song. So yeah, I do remember that. And it sounds like both sides are conceding that yes, he had a copyright interest, in his music, Tidal was just saying, hey, we had an agreement, and the other side is saying, well, I want to see it. Right. Basically, um, what it comes down to is scope of the license that was issued. So, you know, whenever there's any kind of license, and that's essentially what this is, if you give someone permission to use your copyrighted work, then it's a, it's a license. And so the estate is saying, yeah, Prince granted you a license, but it was limited in scope. It was limited to one album for an exclusive 90-day period. And I imagine and it's not, because they're seeing this agreement. Like, they, they know it, or they're just I don't, assuming that this is what Prince would agree to. Uh, well, I, as far as that, if they, since they're conceding that part of it, I, I, there must be some, either an agreement or correspondence or something to... Mm -hmm. Confirm, confirm that much of the agreement. Okay, and so just, then it sounds like I, what, what I'm hearing is even if they were to pull out an agreement, it sounds like they've already seen the agreement. 
I mean, you know, if, if Rock Nation and Title were to pull out some broader agreement, mm -hmm. then I think the, yeah, the trust in the estate would have to back down. But really what I think happened is I think Prince was um, happy to see what Jay-Z was doing with Title, probably that how much of the money um, from the streaming was going to go to the artist may have been more favorable um, than some of the other streaming platforms. And so he wanted to support that. And so I believe Prince probably did say, yeah, I'm going to let you distribute my music, stream my music. But they probably just never got to the point of written documents and other than maybe beyond you know this one album um and, and so, would that need to be in writing yeah that would need to be in okay, writing so. and so i think they may not have an enforce you know they may have had verb because they they kept referencing verbal and written agreements and so it could have been just one of those old handshake deals or well i guess uh, my first question is it sounds like both sides are conceding there's a written agreement somewhere but maybe they're not. Maybe one side is just saying, hey, I don't even think there's a written agreement, but I'll let you have the current album. And, and it's not it, from my, it's not, they didn't attach, yeah. you know, a written agreement or anything, but um, you're right. Whether it's, somehow they're agreeing that you had, this yeah, the one true. album, you know, now for is, this limited now time. Is, Prince's estate at least receiving any proceeds from title streaming all of Prince's music? They should be. And will that play into mitigation of damages? Or well, I, but the problem is that the estate just entered into a, um, a deal with uh, Warner uh, Universal Music Publishing, I think okay. it was, to distribute Prince's music. It's Prince's listening. music, right. So you wouldn't be able to have this loose agreement out there with title. You got you got to clean that up because you don't want they don't want more than one platform or one company having the right you know over the same music. So basically, they've got to clean this up with title. And I think I mean unless they come up with something in writing showing that they had the right to distribute the music more globally um, than just the one album, then I think they're gonna end up getting shut down. Um, and and interesting enough, music. like you said, Title is still streaming it despite the state. Well, they were up until I, I know in the complaint they were seeking an injunction to. Um, I I just saw this article yesterday mm -hmm. on um, Hollywood Reporter and I think TMZ. So there probably hasn't been time to have any kind of injunction hearing or anything like that if they're going to go down that road. But um, you know, but they are seeking to stop title from streaming this music. And then usually with the injunctions, I mean, even if, you know, they don't decide once and for all the copyright, they can still look, we'll stop it until we make the decision. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So and, what do you And generally they, with creative works like this, I think courts generally, I mean, injunctions are sometimes hard to get, but I think when you're dealing with creative works like this, then um, especially where there's evidence that it's going to hurt another Establish business arrangement, then um, you know there's a good chance that a court will give you an injunction. But you know um, when one of the Hangover movies come out and came out, and the tattoo artist for the Mike Tyson tattoo, you know he tried to get an injunction to stop the movie release. Well, you know that <laughs> it, that didn't that didn't happen. It may it may, it may not have happened because they resolved it, or it may not have happened because the judge just wasn't going to stop the release of this movie and it's like even if even if there was an infringement of your copyright then you can be compensated through money like right. how much would how much would you charge to license Warner Brothers or whoever put out that movie to use your tattoo in the movie so so it sounds like you're predicting that there probably isn't an agreement there was just an oral exchange and so likely that state is probably going to win out I think so because I mean I just feel like if there was a, if there was proper documentation when they made their claim in the probate court in Minnesota they being titled they would have attached they would have produced it then I mean even if they had to redact you know certain financial information off out of it 
then that would have been fine. But I just feel like, why would you go through all this if you could easily avoid it by just producing, you know, the document, you know, not unless it was left in, <laughs> right. you know, in a, in a briefcase and, you know, they can't find it. And then they're just fr frantically searching for it. But, you know. That's probably not the case. Well, I guess we'll see if we hear Prince on title lately, <laughs> whether or not there's been a resolution. That's right. I'll have to listen to it to just see if they're still streaming him right yeah. now until it all gets resolved. Well, thanks for you know the information and definitely keep us posted. Yeah. And thank you guys for tuning in. Catch you next time on yeah. Law Filter. We'll see you next time.